Hey guys, Cody here from the Choco Bros, here to bring you episode 3 of Choco Views. Today I am joined by the king of Burmesia, Mr. Matthew Okimoto. Matt, how you doing today? I'm doing good, how about yourself? Oh man, I am great. I am pleased to have you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thanks uh, for having me. So let's see, uh, first things first, how did, you, uh, how did you get your start in the Final Fantasy trading card game? Well, when the, when the game first came out, I think I saw it on Reddit somewhere, and I told my buddy Kyle, which most people probably know Kyle McGinty, but now we've mm -hmm. been friends for a very long time. And when we first started proxying like chapter series cards to like trying to figure out the game, and then like we realized these cards are ridiculous. <laughs> and then because um, by the time we were, we were proxying, like obviously, like we just looked up like chapter series decks. This is like in their thirteenth set where the power level of their cards is just like unreal. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we got like images of what the English version of the cards are, we started printing proxies and just playing the game until it got uh, released in the U.S. And then, of course, uh, as it got released in the U.S., there was a lot of distribution issues. Mm -hmm. But luckily, we had a, a, f a few buddies that were able to get us a few boxes, and then we went from there. Okay, so you, you've been playing since the very beginning, basically. Even before the beginning, technically. Yeah, technically, yeah. <laughs> locally with a bunch of buddies. Okay, and uh, for those of you guys that don't know, Matt, where, you, where do you play locally? Uh, I play at Cardium Coliseum in Orange County, California. Most people probably know that by now. <laughs> yeah, and for the most part, I think most listeners are going to know that. <laughs> uh, so how is how is your local scene out there? I know you guys have one of the biggest, most competitive, so tell me a little bit about it. Um... It's actually, like, what's funny is, so so back on the, where, when uh, I got my first product, I had a bunch of extra commons, rares, and stuff, and that's when Henry, who's the owner of Cardium Coliseum, opened up a store, and uh, I went down there, because he was, like, one of the first stores wanting to get into Final Fantasy, but he couldn't get product either, so I basically sold him, like, all my extra stuff, I just got the play set of everything, and just <coughs> sold him all my extra stuff for, like, store credit, and that's how he was able to help us jumpstart the scene, because then people would come in, they'd see... Final Fantasy singles and like ask about the game and whatnot. Uh, so we started off with like four people at the store mm. every week. <laughs> Literally four people. That's including <laughs> Henry playing. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty small because people couldn't get product, and the people who did get the product, most of them were just collectors, so they didn't play the game. Now was this still like early Opus One? I'm guessing. Yeah, very early Opus One. Yeah, see like, when we got wait, like like <clears throat> Wave One Opus One. Right, yeah, when we got our Opus 1 boxes, it was just me and my buddy playing in our, like, my apartment at the time. And, like, one store got, like, half a box in, and they were like, oh, you guys can only buy so many packs. And we're like, oh, man, like, we want, like, plenty of product, but obviously the shipping delays on that were pretty pretty rough on the game. Um, so how did you guys get it to grow to what it is now? Uh, so we, we just kept showing up, and... Getting, uh, basically, what, ha what helped the game grow in our area was Wave 2 of Opus 1, where stores, act granted it was still small, mm -hmm. but stores were able to get like six boxes instead of no boxes. So that started to grow in a little bit, and then we made the uh, California Facebook group, and um, Kyle and I and a, and a few other people, we, we basically contacted every single store within like a 50-mile radius and was like, hey, do you guys support the game, blah, 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 if not, or if you do... Here's a Facebook page for California, you know, direct people there, or you guys can join and advertise that you are running Final Fantasy TCG. And eventually we got, like, not, like, like four or five stores, not a lot, like, four or five is a lot for us at the time, right. but, like, with the amount of card stores in California, it's not that much. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah, there's, there's so many card stores in California. It's like, I, like, I think California is, like, probably one of the biggest hubs for most TCGs. Interesting, that's awesome, yeah. You can, you can pretty much play any TCG here, if you want, <laughs> for the most part. Even, like, ones you would think would be dead, There, there's probably a store that holds tournaments here, and has, like, a somewhat decent scene. I'll say, I think I've heard that you guys still have, like, a Force of Will scene out there, even, right? Yeah, there's, like, one store that has Force of Will, and that's, like, where all the Force of Will players go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's awesome, though. It's a pretty good area to live in, if you're a fan of trading card games. Yeah, it's uh, def definitely a good area. <laughs> so, uh, how many nights a week do you guys do locals, at least where you play? Um, I can only make a local once a week. Cause, <laughs> so, what's what's funny about it, calling it a local, is a, a local to me is an hour from my house. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, none of the car stores near me actually 
really support the game or have any product. One just opened up like 30 minutes away, so that can potentially be like a new local, but that's going to take time to get that scene growing. Right. Uh, the more established scenes at the stores are an hour away from me for the most part. But um, I attend one a week, but there is one pretty much every day except Monday and Tuesday. So like Wednesday through Sunday, there's at least one tournament within reasonable distance of everybody. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so like you play a card game Coliseum, correct? Yeah, that's that's the one I... Because so they hold one Thursday and Saturday. Um, most of the time, I just go Saturday. Uh, sometimes, if I'm like really feeding to play some cards, I'll make the uh, because I work like two hours from there, so I'll like drive two hours after work to go play sometimes. But that's like rare. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, how many people do you guys usually have show up on like those Saturdays? Um, on on Saturdays, we usually get twelve to sixteen, uh, hmm. depending on if there's a bigger event. If there's a big event coming up, we'll get more because obviously people want to spend more time to practice. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the Thursday ones, I think they usually hover around 12, 10 to 12, so it's, like, not bad. Not, not like, crazy, but not bad. No, it's definitely a, a solid, consistent number. Uh, yeah, like, my local tonight, it only had six players, so we're, we've been kind of struggling as of late. But, uh, <clears throat> so let's see, uh, after a while, you guys started to kind of throw together what was known as the SoCal circuit. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and how that came to be? So the SoCal circuit was another way for, for Kyle and I to figure out a way to grow our scene. Um, we wanted a way to get people to attend other stores. Because like, the one thing we noticed is that as we grew the scene, there were stores that had like four or five people at each store. But none of them would go to any other store to play. Mm -hmm. So we all would have like our six six man pools of players. And we're like, okay, what can we do to incentivize people to go to these other stores so we can get like 20 and 30 men tournaments? So... Um, we contacted all the stores that we knew had a scene and set up this circuit where um, we had this a, an X amount of entry and then we would take some of that to use for a prize pool at the end for the championship so that way we could come up with some kind of money for the championship. And that got players to travel to all the stores. And then we set up like a rating system because for uh, surprise, people like to compete. <laughs> <laughs> so like having a rating system inspired people to travel to these events because be before they'd be like, oh... Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Are you good? Um, uh, before they would uh, be like, okay, why would I travel? I could just play locally. <laughs> but because we implemented like a rating system, and we were lucky enough to work with Ultra Pro to get some like Ultra Pro sleeves and ra random Ultra Pro merchandise, that people were like, okay, well now we feel like the value is worth it because there's more. It's more than just a local. It's like we get random Ultra Pro sleeves, uh, dice, cool, cool stuff like that. Right. And they get to earn points towards qualifying for the championship. So those uh, and the point structure was set up so that was pretty much always a positive. Uh, you never lost points; you only gained points. Mm -hmm. So like you could attend the event, not do well, but still get some points to contribute towards your qualification. Or you could show up and just be a monster and like win and get auto qualified for winning. <laughs> so like it rewarded players who could spike a tournament, but also rewarded those players who need to grind their way to a qualification. No, that's awesome. So how did, uh, how did like, I guess that was technically like a circuit, like, season, basically. How did that all, um, like, how did the championship turn out? How was that? Uh, the, uh, so I'll give, you, I'll give you a little rundown. So the, uh, the SoCal circuit, when it first started, it was, it averaged about 18 to 20 players. Oh, wow. For the first season. And then the championship, because uh, it, you have to qualify for it, it ended up being only, like, I think 34 people qualified, and I think 28 of those 34 showed up for the championship. And the championship's free entry, and the, the price pool is basically, I think at the time we were doing a dollar, we, we would take a dollar from each entry from each uh, SoCal circuit event. So at, at the end, it ended up being like maybe like 200 bucks towards the championship. But it was a free tournament, and we used that $200 to get t-shirts made and some other random stuff for to use for pricing. And then the second season, that's when we we were able to crunch the numbers better, figure out like, okay, the first season we had people pay $10 to enter and we would take a dollar. The second season we, we bumped it to 15 and we would take $2. And then like that way our price pool was bigger and also more people showed up. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third season, I believe we did $20 and took, I was like, I think it was $3 or $4 per entry. And our last season was the 
best prize pool I, <laughs> we've had. Like some people, like <laughs> even said it was better than some petite cups. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> like so, like our prize pool for the last season was like six hundred or seven hundred dollars and stuff. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> for, for 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 a free tournament that you, I mean you had to qualify for, it, but it's it free. You just showed up, and as long as you qualified, you got the play. And then we were lucky enough to uh, work with. Uh, Square Enix, and they gave us a Play Arts Kai as well, and it was a really <laughs> those people who like those EV tournaments. It was pretty high EV. No, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, so let's see. You uh, you participated in the first ever North American uh, Nationals, correct? Yes, I did. Okay, I know it's been it's been a while. I was there as well. Uh, how was that? How, what did you think of that tournament experience? Uh, as far as the experience. Um, there's pros and cons. I I enjoyed the community. I got to meet the community. And for the most part, everyone I met was super nice and awesome, which is, I don't know if anyone plays other TCGs, but that's a nice change. <laughs> right, some, no, some, absolutely. Some, some other TCGs, people aren't so welcoming. Like you, you can't really just go up to someone that you've talked to online and hold a conversation because in person, other, other TCGs, people will just like straight up ignore you. <laughs> right, no, absolutely. But this community was, was really awesome. Uh, at that event, uh, as far as the tournament structure, uh, I personally wasn't a fan, but I knew it was their first time doing it, so I just took it for what it was. Yeah, right. Uh, and then, uh, so now, how did you? Uh, how did you end up doing? Let's just say, how about day one? Do you remember what your record was? Uh, I want to say I was X and two. Okay, that's yes. that's what my. That's exactly. I lost to Wayne. I lost to Wayne in the Swiss, and then I got a double loss against Cosmore. Yeah, X and two. Oh, against oh Matt Cosmore. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, how did you how did you feel about uh, them taking top sixty four for day two? Um, I think top sixty four is fine. O honestly, I wish Nationals was. I, I wish Nationals that, that last year's Nationals was this year's Nationals in terms of like. I think they should allow more people to play at nationals, but uh, we, uh, instead of being like, oh, if you win a Crystal Cup or top X Crystal Cup, you qualify, I think they should just uh, either, like, top four should get X amount of buys and winning a Crystal Cup auto days twos. I think you should redo that reward, but allow more people to attend nationals. Personally, I feel that. I, feel, I think the game's probably a little too young to limit nationals as much as they are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm speaking from like a California perspective because um, like our local qualifiers are probably going to be 30, 40 players and uh, local qualifiers other places have been like 11 <laughs> right. or 10 and it's like it's I know I've had a lot of other California players complain about that but sorry I got off track <laughs> no no it's all, it's all good I, I, I kind of agree with you like, uh, like if you have a 40 person local and only one guy gets their invite like there's obviously more great players in the room, but I see what you're saying. <clears throat> and for instance, my first local qualifier that I won, it was only 11 players, like you said. Like, I didn't feel like I really like earned it. Like you, I mean, you guys got a, obviously you won your qualifier, but the other guys they got to fight against like 35 other people, basically. Um, and, and, and I want to. I'm not. I'm not trying to take away from anyone that qualifies from 11 man. Like. Just be, the the number uh, shouldn't depict the skill. Oh, no, I just absolutely. think that I just think that uh, the the qualification should scale based off of attendance. That's all. I, I like you could be a really good FFTCG player and qualify in eleven. Man, that's totally fine. I just think that if there's like a like I think there should be a threshold where okay after X number the top two qualify or something. Right, which I think in Europe I believe they did that. Where like I think if it was more than maybe sixteen or so, there was two invites or something like that. I remember reading about it, um, but no, maybe that's definitely something they can consider for next year at least. Just because I think it would be cool to have like another like what was it, 180 players that we had at last Nats that actually showed up. Yeah, like it's it's cool to be like, hey, we had 180 players instead of like this year we're going to be like, oh, there was like 80 or 90. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I think like if you were to tell someone from another TCG that you're trying to get interested and be like, oh yeah, we just had like a. 400 person nationals they're gonna be like whoa the game's that big but if you tell them like hey we just had 80 person nationals they're gonna be like okay <laughs> right <laughs> no i completely agree uh so let's see uh right before nats are kind of like 
after Nats was ending, uh, you started up uh, Meta Potion. So why don't you tell me how that all how that all came about? Well, uh, so originally it was a SoCal circuit because it was strictly in SoCal. Mm -hmm. uh, after Nationals, uh, a lot of the NorCal people talked to us and they wanted help getting their scene started up there. So uh, we felt it was weird to have the SoCal circuit be in NorCal because that's <laughs> NorCal's not SoCal. Right. So we, uh, I talked to Kyle and we, we decided to come up with the name called Meta Potion, which is just like a brand, and that way we could expand outside of SoCal and pretty much hold the same thing. So um, the second season of the, or the te te technically the first season of the Meta Potion uh, circuit, we had one in NorCal and one in SoCal with rating systems for both. Oh, interesting. So they were separate rating systems, correct? Like separate yeah. from each other? Yeah, they were separate from each other, but they used the same structure. Okay. So how how were how was the turnout at some of those tournaments? Um, so the the NorCal one, they averaged about uh, I, I have the data somewhere on my Google Drive, but I believe it was like anywhere from twenty to twenty five players almost every event. Which oh, is, wow. which is pretty good. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think now, now that the breaks on circuit, they're getting like upwards of thirty, low thirties, which is great. So they're growing. But um, uh, what 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 helped us get the NorCal circuit started is I talked to pretty much all the NorCal players and I was like, okay, let me know which shops that you guys go to for locals. You know, which ones support you guys the best? Give me their email and like basically just sent out a mass email to all the NorCal stores and was like, here's our structure. This is how it works. This is what we did previously for the SoCal circuit. This is what we want to do for the Meta Potion circuit. You know who's interested, um, and I think we only had two or three, maybe three stores out of like six that were given jump in on it. Hmm. But but those three stores, in my opinion, benefited a lot because they've had their loyal players since then, and they and they still hold which are now the break zone circuit events. So it's probably one of the best <laughs> investments from those stores for the Final Fantasy TCG scene. Right, yeah. and so. You guys kind of, Meta Potion basically took over the SoCal circuit, and the break zone is now the NorCal circuit, is that is that correct? Yep. Yeah, so after uh, Meta Potion season one ended, I was like, okay, that's, that's a lot of work for one or two people to manage the circuit in, in two regions. So I talked to a lot of the, a handful of the NorCal people, and I was like, okay, hey, uh, um, I know you guys are starting to think about uh, creating your own thing. And this is before they came up with the name The Break Zone, and there was like JT and, and Lauren and a handful of them were talking about starting something, and we just chatted them up, and I was like, here's our structure, if you, need, if you have any questions, let me know, and we just chit-chatted back and forth, and they wanted to start commentating and streaming and doing all that stuff, and they just took it over, handed, handled everything, and became The Break Zone, and handed, they created their own Break Zone circuit, and they took the structure that I originally had, and molded it that best fits them and we continued with the uh, SoCal one and just kept the Meta Potion circuit for SoCal. Interesting. That's awesome that you guys like could work as like a team and figure out like what's best for the community and get two awesome circuits going basically. Yeah, and we always we always throw ideas like every time a new season starts we always talk like hey what worked the previous season? What should we do this season? And like what what were the complaints of the previous season? How could we make it better the next season? Like we, we always brainstorm about that no yeah that's absolutely that's awesome uh so you guys actually had a petite cup out in california correct yep that, that is the first event that breaks on commentated actually i believe <laughs> oh really okay and so did you you didn't play in that though correct no uh it was it was the first event that uh screen outside of nationals held in california mm -hmm. and they reached out to Meta Potion and uh, asked if we were interested in helping them run it. So basically, Kyle and I uh, forfeited the chance to play to help get things going and judge and stuff. So Kyle and I didn't play in that event. No, but that's awesome that you guys helped out, helped run it. Uh, that that shows a lot uh, just to the community. That shows how much you guys have put into the game, and I think that's awesome. Um, but then came uh, ARG Vegas. Why don't you tell me about that experience? So that one was kind of funny. Um, I always so when they announced it, I was like, "Oh, sweet Vegas!" Any, any excuse to go to Vegas for a tournament is a, 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 pretty much almost always go. Like I think if Square Enix makes a tournament in Vegas, 
they're going to get a good turnout because even people who don't live in California or Vegas, they'll fly in just because it's Vegas. <laughs> right, right. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, it's it's pretty reasonable, too. Like, like it's a reasonable place to get a hotel, right? You're not paying, like, $500 a night or $400 a night like you would be paying other places mm-hmm. for a good hotel. But, um, so, yeah, that one, uh, I, was, I was actually on in the middle of going or not, like, I really wanted to go, but I didn't want to take a day off of work, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I basically drove down Friday night, because the event was Saturday morning uh, after work, and it was like, me and Kyle and my wife, and we just drove down, and then Greg Cole and a bunch of other people drove down as well, and uh, yeah, and then the event was Saturday, I think it was, I want to say 40 people signed up, but it was ended up being like 38 or 39. I think. Okay. And uh, how, how did you do at that event? Um, I won. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, so I, I say I won, but, like, technically we split top four. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there. Like, uh, so I, I'm, try, I'm trying to remember the top, off the top of my head. It was, like, me, Kyle, Nicholas Basari, who, uh, Nicholas Basari, top 16, the SoCal Cup, I believe. He was the guy that was on stream playing, like, that 43 EX burst deck. Okay, yeah. Um, and then there was Sharina. Uh, she's the one who top four the SoCal Crystal Cup. She was on Wind Earth, correct? Uh, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was on Wind Earth. And then um, there was two other Arizona people. Oh, they're gonna hate me if I don't remember their name. Uh, is it, I don't remember their name. Uh, <laughs> is it Josh Gardner by chance? Is he one of the no, Arizona guys? No, I, I think Josh got like ninth or tenth as. He has like the worst luck when it comes to bubbling because he had a similar experience at the SoCal Crystal Cup getting like 17. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, pretty he, rough. I, I believe he bubbled that one as well. Like literally, I think it was like ninth or tenth. Is breakers breakers hate the guy? Yeah. Um. So you oh, want? Oh, 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 Zach Zach Paisley was the, one of the other guys. And oh, I definitely I definitely recognize the name. The other guy he wears a bandana. I don't remember his name, but I call I always call him a bandana, bandana man. If you remember, we'll just just shout it out at some point during this. <laughs> and then there, oh, and then Creon, that was the other one. Creon, I think people have heard of him. Creon okay. Smolnik, I think. And then yeah, I don't remember the other guy's name, but yeah, so, so, those people who topped that event. And then the top four ended up being uh, me, Kyle, Nick. Oh, Justin Jacoby, that was the other guy. For, uh, oh, Justin okay. Jacoby came from Michigan. Yeah, yeah, so he was the other guy, and so it was me, Nick, Kyle, Justin, and we split top four. But since I was the highest seeded in Swiss, they just declared me the winner. Oh, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so how how was the event ran? Was it good? I know that was, was that ARG and Magnet that put that together? Yeah, it was basically ran by Cosmore, and uh, he, did, he did a good job. He judged the entire thing, he set up the entire thing, and got all, all of our pricing and everything. It was, in my opinion, it was ran very good for one person no yeah, that's awesome show. yeah he, i mean he's one of the main reasons I, i've stayed pretty i i mean i focused mainly on this game outside of other card games watching his videos and stuff like that uh so let's see that's more uh more recent events after opus 5 dropped uh there was the boston crystal cup the first uh first way to get an invite to north american nationals uh, why don't you tell me about that experience so, uh, so that one, that one's a, that one's a one that'll always stand my memory. Not, not because I did well, but, um, it was, un- so people have, might have seen my deck name, right? It was uh, in loving memory of Rudy. So mm-hmm. my, um, my aunt's father passed away. It's not, it's kind of hard to call him my grandpa cause he's not like my grandpa, grandpa, but anyways, um, he passed away a week before Boston. And then they ended up having his funeral that Friday of the Boston event. I couldn't make it because I already paid a bunch of money to like travel. Mm-hmm. So like I felt I felt like like really uh, down because I couldn't make it. So that's kind of why that's where the name Technic came from. Pretty sure no one knew that. <laughs> yeah, I actually I actually kind of wondered. Uh, I didn't know I didn't know if there was something behind it. Uh, but no, that's man, that's that that's that's tough to to lose someone and then have not be able to make the funeral. I mean, I can't imagine what you were going through. But that's awesome that you dedicated. The deck name to him, and then uh, obviously, how did you do at that event? Uh, I I won. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, so the the first day, I would I think I ended X and two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's X and two. 
my only losses those that day was to California players. <laughs> I, lo- I lost to the two people I came with. I lost to Greg Cole, who was playing Mono Earth with like 20-something EX Burst. Mm-hmm. And then I lost to Brian Berkeley, who most people probably... He doesn't uh, post much, but he's had good results. People probably know him. He, he's the fire ass guy. Yeah, he's the fire ass guy. He top two the Petit Cup. He also top four the Toronto Crystal Cup. Man, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. So, yeah, I've seen his name pop up quite a bit on like top cut streams and stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, he does well at the Meta Potion events as well. Right. Um, but what's funny about that is, so the the night before, both him and I were gonna play Fire Ice, and I, and then like for some reason, my gut was like, "All right, I want to play Ice Earth just because I like the deck, and you can play Fire Ice, and that way, at the end of the day, we'll be like, okay, which one of us made the better call." Because <laughs> right. we both like, we like both the decks, um, and he's comfortable with Fire Ice. So, um, uh, spoiler, we both ended up doing pretty well. So I guess it didn't matter which one we chose. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I was say you, you, all three of you guys ended up making top sixteen, right? Yeah, I think at the end of day one, I, th- I believe it went Brian, Greg, me, and it was like six, seven, eight. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty, pretty good that everybody you travel with all made top 16. Uh, so how was the top 16, if you remember, like some of those matchups? I know I talked to Andy. I know he had to play you in top 8. Yeah, uh, so the first round of the top 16, I don't remember the guy's name, and I'm sorry, but I believe he was a Magic player. I think he I think he was one of those players that's just good at card games, mm-hmm. and his friends was like, hey, come play in this Crystal Cup, and here's a deck, and I think that's what he... I think that's pretty much his story. <laughs> hey. I don't remember, I don't see him post and I don't remember his name, <clears throat> but he, he like playing against them, you know when you play someone and you're, and you're like, okay, the way they're playing, like, like they know the mechanics, like they're, they're just good, like they're a good card player. Right. So yeah. like, when you, you ever play someone get that feeling? So that was basically him. He was playing Wind Water, which I was actually a little scared because I was on Ice Earth and I was a little worried because I was, uh, Ranger is a little bit pain in the butt for me. <laughs> no, absolutely. <yeah. laughs> and I was like, man, I, I think, I actually had to shen Toto one ranger because he never overextended, and that one ranger was getting in points of damage every single turn, and I couldn't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, I was like, all right, well, I guess you win, man. You did four damage to me. All right, I guess I have to shen Toto now. No, absolutely. Whatever. I mean, but, um, if it wins you the game, you might as well. <laughs> yeah, it's still really embarrassing having to shen Toto a single <laughs> ranger, but it, it won me the game, so I guess it is what it is. Okay, and, and then, then then you moved on to face Carmona in top eight, right? Yeah, that was such a cool match. I wish it was on stream, man. Yeah, I've talked I've talked to him quite a bit uh, on the last episode actually uh, about that match, and then after we got done, we talked more about it. Um, so how was how was that? How was getting that was was that your first time meeting Andy? Yeah, it was okay. my first time meeting Andy. He's a great dude, man. If anyone gets to play him, like he's just a good, fun person to play against. It's just a really, really, really good guy. And, and he's good. So it's like, <laughs> you get to play <laughs> someone who's good and fun to play with, that's like a win-win, right? <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. sometimes you play people who are good and they're just like not fun to play against. But <laughs> Andy's the opposite. He's, he's super fun to play against and he's good. So it's like just a good time the entire time. No, yeah, absolutely. I had a blast uh, doing the interview. That was actually the first time I've ever really like talked to him. Kind of like this is the first time I've ever talked to you. Like, if you, for those of you guys watching, I don't actually like know these guys that well outside of Facebook. This is our first actual like conversation we've had. So, uh, but no, he's a great di- he's a great guy. Uh, so you win you win that match. Now you get your qualification. Uh, so then you go into top four. Who did you go against in top four? Yeah, I do want to say it though too. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> the entire time, I always made this joke because I've never like won a trophy. For like a TCG, like I've, I've always been like okay at TCGs, but I never like won a trophy. So that was like the first trophy I won. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> right? No, absolutely. Yeah. The, my uh, my local qualifier. That was the first trophy I've ever won from any like card game or anything like that. So. Right. It's, it's like it's, it's the best feeling. Like it doesn't matter how many people are there or or what people say, but like get, even even a local qualifier getting a trophy, there's like it's just it's just a cool feeling. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I I, I played Yu-Gi-Oh for quite a bit, and I did. I was okay at locals, and I was not very good in the competitive scene. So this is my first like real, real competitive card game. Um, so moving on to top four, who did you play in top four? I can't, I can't remember if that uh, was on stream. Top or not. four, I played against Colin Rupert. I believe he's from Gamers Heaven. I believe that's in Pennsylvania. I don't remember, but I think Pennsylvania Gamers Heaven. But um, he's got a cool group of people. He's got he, he um, 
plays with Gabe. I don't think people have seen Gabe. He's usually the guy that's judging all these Crystal Cups. He goes to like all of them and judges. Oh, really? Okay. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I played Colin. He was playing Mono Ice. Colin also, Colin is a, a great dude. He's he's quiet, but he's like a, like once you like open him up and like he gets to know you, like he definitely will talk more. And he's definitely a, a really good player and really really awesome dude. Uh, he played Mono Ice, and uh, luckily for me, I had a lot of testing against Mono Ice. <laughs> right, nice. Yeah. So that one, I I believe I won bold games, but he played it super well. Like. He forced me to Shantoto, and then after I Shantoto, he was able to play like three more dudes the following turn. I was mm. like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> the heck!" Right now, and then uh, and then you moved on to the to the finals, which I remember. I think I was driving. I was I just got off work, and I was on my way to a, a local tournament. And I remember watching you you faced off against Max Williams. So how was how was it knowing that you were going in against Max? Well, what, what's what's funny about that matchup is. Like, uh, I don't think people know, like, Joe Lazinski, he was the national champion mm-hmm. of last year, and, like, Matthew Rice, and then Max Max Williams, people know. I actually played Octagon on all of them, like, two weeks prior to Boston, so, like, we already knew what we were playing. <laughs> right. And, like, tested against and everything, so, it was, like, it was kind of funny to meet him in the finals after, like, we've been playing, testing against each other. <laughs> no. But, um... That's awesome. Yeah. I think I think you guys mentioned that. Uh, during the, like the little short interview you guys did before your match, I remember that. Yeah, it was, and, and honestly, I really thought that, and I, and I still feel like that was it was pretty not so much in my favor. But mm-hmm. I think I was able to adjust game three and be like, okay, maybe there is specific lines of play that can take that can set put me in a position to win. Right. No. Um, yeah. Absolutely. But like just just at first glance, I was like, oh dang, <laughs> that seems rough. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I don't even I, playing against uh, that that water monsters deck, especially right then. Though, I mean, it was brand new; nobody really knew much about it. Obviously, you had tested with him on Octagon, but like that took the format by storm for sure. Yeah, but what's funny is uh, I tested him on Octagon, but he didn't play that deck because he didn't know about <laughs> that deck until the night before. <laughs> oh wow! Like the night before Boston. Yeah. Yeah, so like night before Boston, he was talking to Alex Hancock, who, who I believe is the originator of the deck. Oh, okay. Um, and Alex sent him the list, and then uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know he was playing that. Oh, wow. But, it's, but we did test before, but uh, that's why I was like going in. I was like, dang, I haven't played against this deck, but it seems it seems a little rough. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely, it's a sweet list. Uh, so you ended up coming up coming out on top of game three. So how did it feel to? Uh, to win Boston, uh, to get the biggest trophy there, and then uh, obviously get those three uh, the three buys at Nationals. How does that feel? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, it felt, it felt great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, like I said before, like I was happy getting a trophy for a top four, but like even going further and getting the first place trophy and the three buys, it was just, it's just it's just a really good feeling. It it definitely makes it feel like like your hard work pays off. You know, like just practicing a lot and like all the work that put into like creating the, the competitive circuit in California and all that like it felt like work, the work paid off so it's a really good feeling all right no absolutely uh, so then uh, you guys get got the SoCal Crystal Cup announced at card game Coliseum correct yes so how did that feel getting like your local shop to be able to host like one of the biggest tournaments in the country it was, it was sweet what was it the biggest for outside of nationals uh, the biggest, it, oh I'm sure I believe so. I think so. it was like 130 or 140, something like that at the end. Yeah, I, I didn't know how big Boston was, but I believe you guys had the, the next biggest outside of uh, Nats the first year round. Yeah, it was it was sweet. Um, first of all, not having to fly to a Crystal Cup was amazing. <laughs> right, no, absolutely. Um, it was only, a, only an hour drive, so that's great. But not, not only having it at CGC, um, it felt really good because... Henry put a lot of his time and effort into Final Fantasy TCG when he first started his store, when like no other stores in the area really gave Final Fantasy TCG the time of day. So, from like a, a California community perspective, it felt really good to see like your local store, who's worked really hard to grow the scene, get you know some love from Square. No, yeah, absolutely. And I, I saw the pictures from the stream, like the the play mats that you guys had on all the tables, like the big like card game Coliseum play mats. Those look sweet. Uh, I mean, just the whole event was just, it seemed like it was ran perfectly. I watched the entire stream. Uh, 
So how did you end up doing it uh, at that one? I got dumpstered. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ended X3. That's okay. That's, that's, that's still above uh, above 50%, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess. <laughs> but you also had a, a pretty unique matchup on stream against, uh, was it the Hobby League Japan guy? One of them? Oh, yeah. Uh, Yama Yamaguchi-san. Yes. Okay. I, I remember watching that. That was pretty interesting. You guys, I believe you were, playing, you were on Scions? I want to say you were on Scions. Um, so I can give you a little backstory of how that even came to be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That I can I'd love to hear it. Uh, so when uh, I commentated the uh, Toronto Crystal Cup, he was one of the Hobby Japan people that was there. And like when we went to dinner and stuff, we, would just, we were talking, and um, the translator was there to help us like, hold a conversation. Uh -huh. And uh, I was, that's when I found out that he was like a previous chapter series champion. Like He was one of the best players from the chapter series. That eventually got hired by Hobby Japan for this game, and so I was like, "Oh, that's cool! I can't wait! I really want to play you someday." And and then that's when he said, "Okay, we'll we'll, we'll play in California, basically." <laughs> <laughs> and so when he said that, uh, he uh, he said he said that he's gonna train and create a really cool deck and play play in California. And I was like, "Okay, sweet, that sounds good." So uh, that's how that matchup came to be. No, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> and then um, how I ended up on <laughs> that random Scions deck. So. If you, if you don't believe me, that deck was going to be the deck that Kyle and I were going to play for the Sogo Crystal Cup. <laughs> no, yeah, I've heard I've heard some stories from Sam. He was telling me about it. <laughs> so, like, the day before, I think two days before the Crystal Cup, Kyle is, like, over the last minute person, and he's like, hey, man, i got to figure out what the heck I'm playing for this event that's in two days. I was like, all right, man, let's do this. Let's figure it out. And typical Kyle fashion, he, like, makes all these random jank decks, and then, like, <laughs> really believes that they're the thing to happen and I'm like alright man let's do it and, and, and I humor him because like Kyle is a very unique deck builder and he, he, he actually used to work on Hex or maybe still doesn't remember like he used, do you know what Hex is the online card game I haven't I, I don't know what that it's, is but... it's, it's basically similar to Magic and he, he worked on that game so he's got like a good TCG oh, card okay. design development background so like he's usually pretty good at pinpointing good interactions and, and, and like uh type of decks and archetypes so like i, I was like all right I'll humor, I'll humor you kyle i'll humor you <laughs> <laughs> and um so he built the sign deck and we made a we spent literally probably like 12 hours of making changes and i think he sent it to josh gardner and to sam to like get other feedback and i think sam played it at a local and did well and um so anyways that's how that deck came to be and then the day of the crystal cup Kyle uh, said that there was like a black widow or something on his deck box or some 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 thing that causes him to, to freak out and his voodoo magic of oh this is bad karma I can't play this deck anymore and I was like all right whatever here's mono ice so I literally just took out mono ice out of my <laughs> bag already sleeved because I in my feeling I was like if Kyle if Kyle doesn't decide I'm just gonna hand him mono ice he's a good player even though he doesn't really he didn't really play test the deck he'll figure it out it's like here's mono ice Kyle so that's so he once he played mono ice and then I switched to a different deck because I was only gonna run scions if he ran scions. Oh, okay. So I, so I switched to Wind Earth. Um, so that's how that deck came to be. And then once I found out that I was going to be able to play Yamaguchi-san on stream, I was like, oh, cool, I'll just play this deck on stream then. And then that way I didn't feel like I wasted 12 hours of learning, figuring the deck out. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. And Kyle went on to, uh, to top four. Was that, that was your ice deck, I'm guessing? Yeah, well, I mean, it's not like, I don't think, I didn't really make it. <laughs> I, right, I didn't right. really spend too much time. I just took, you know, basic stock ice list online. No, yeah, I mean, like I, that's I, a con that's a controversial question you're asking me here, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean obviously I've I've topped with ice, but it wasn't anything. I I didn't come up with like the flan package or anything like that. But uh, but no, that's awesome. Uh, so being it, how does it feel? You got to go to two Crystal Cups. I'm actually I'll be going to my second one here in a couple days at Gen Con. Um, so I'm I'm pretty stoked for that. Uh, and you'll also be attending Gen Con, correct? Yes, hoping to redeem myself. From sucking at SoCal. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, are you entering? Uh, are you entering the sealed event as well? The sealed crystal cup. Yeah, I'm gonna play in the sealed on Thursday and then be constructed on Friday. Okay. So if you guys are if you guys haven't bought your tickets uh, for constructed, go ahead and just go for Saturday. Uh, it's a safe bet. All these guys, <laughs> all the good, all the good players. No offense to anybody playing Saturday, but a lot of the, these really good players are playing Friday. So if you just want to dodge them all together. 
go for Saturday. <laughs> uh, so uh, so let's see. That'll be your that'll be your fourth crystal or third crystal cup. That'll be the fourth one I'm attending, but third one I'm playing. Because I, I attended Toronto, but I commented it. That's right, that's right, that's right. I, for, I keep forgetting about that. Or I guess it'll be your fourth and fifth, because it's technically two Crystal Cups. So, oh, true, yeah. <laughs> technically so, two Crystal Cups, yep. That's pretty good, getting to go to five Five out of seven is not bad. And maybe maybe Seattle, is that on the radar? Or Yeah, actually, I'm pretty much planning on going all. The only one I didn't go to or couldn't go to was Kansas, but I'm planning on going to Seattle as well, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I appreciate that. I didn't have to play in Top Cut, so. <laughs> I, I was actually going to go. Like, there was a high chance I was going to go, but then I was like, dang, Gen Con's really expensive. All right, I probably shouldn't go. Yeah, no, I, so. I fully expected to walk in and see, like, you and, like, maybe Greg Cole. I, I thought Andy Carmona was also coming up from Florida. Uh, so I was actually a, I was a little bit bummed because I didn't get to meet you guys. But at the same time, I was relieved. I was like, "All right, and my the competition's a little bit easier. Like it's still very difficult, but like it got a little bit easier." Um, uh, so, so how do you how do you feel about the sealed uh, the sealed crystal cut? Um, I'm actually pretty excited for it. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's probably a majority of people who aren't too happy with how this game is in sealed, and like while I agree on some aspects, I just think it's nice to have a crystal cup that's just a different format than constructed. No, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, sure, maybe the sealed isn't the the best for like like right now, but it's better than it was Opus Five. <laughs> Opus Five sealed the sealed was pretty crappy. Won't oh, no open, but um, <laughs> no, I've heard, I've heard uh, stories. I, I actually, whenever Opus Five did the pre-release, I just went in and bought my pre-release and walked out. I didn't actually play in it, so I I never got to experience it. Yeah, you didn't miss out on much. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, <all> um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm really excited for the sealed, the sealed uh, Crystal Cup. Um, I'm curious if they're going to cut the top 16 or top 8, because they're trying to knock it all out in one day, right? And all the Crystal Cups, they've done cut the top 16. But it, at the same time, it feels weird to cut to a top cut for a sealed event and it not be draft, in my opinion. Like, as far as I know, that it's not draft. You mean like like redraft, like a top cut? or So, so like, so like um, I used to play WoW TCG. Mm -hmm. And like so, when they had limited uh, big events, you would get your sealed pool. Um, I also want to mention this: when you get your sealed pool, you would register your sealed pool. They would collect it and then pass it back to people. And some people would get the same sealed pool, and other people would get a different sealed person's sealed pool. You would then verify every single card on the sheet to make sure no cards were were, were um, mistakenly put in there or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you would create your deck and then register your deck. So there was like multiple ways that, to prevent people from cheating. Um, Interesting. I don't know what their plan is for the Crystal Cup. I would, I would hope they do some sort of registration, but if they don't, I think it's going to hurt the integrity of the tournament. Not saying that we have people that are going to put pocket poles or whatever in their in their decks. Right. No, I, I but, completely understand what you're but saying. But there's man. no, there's no auditing of it. There's no way to say like if someone, like what, what, what I feel sucks is like if someone does good and they have a good deck half the people are going to be like oh how did you get that good deck right like even if they opened it there's no there's right. no way to prove no, that yeah, you actually like how, up, did, right? you so how like, did you pull two cane or three cane or something like crazy right so like one it sucks because it it, 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 it makes it easier to, for people to cheat and two people who don't cheat and, and that do well they don't get as much credit as they deserve for doing well because of this, there's no like auditing of like prevention of deck ridge and all that stuff as far as i know unless they implement it yeah I'm, I'm hoping they'll implement something where there's like all the packs that we have are tracked and like we have to make deck lists and stuff like that <clears throat> um, yeah for wild tcg they stamped every card which i think is the easiest way <laughs> if oh, you're not gonna if you're not gonna have people register decks at least have at least stamp the cards so that you know that when you're playing against someone if they don't have a stamp on that card it probably didn't come from the event right like that's yeah. a quick way to do it mm-hmm but then people don't like their cards being stamped. So there's like all these... A lot of things factor into it. Yeah, factoring in. But, um... I don't, sorry, I, didn't, didn't mean to get off tangent. <laughs> oh, no, you're all good. Oh, hopefully we don't get any, like, cheaters or anything like that. I, I oh. doubt with this community, I don't, I don't see it happening, but... <clears throat> yeah, like, like I, I, I agree with you. I think there is a very slim chance of this community, of people doing that. However, with three buys on the line, trophies and whatnot... Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are some people that may or may not be like 
you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. You got to participate in the SoCal Cup, which was the first to do two days, or two flights, but then phased off on a third day. Uh, so how did how do you feel about that going into Gen Con, where it's kind of like the same format, basically? Um, I am not a fan of the two-day format. Mm -hmm. I would rather it just be one day, do your Swiss rounds, cut to a top cut, do your top cut the next day. I think, in my opinion, it's hard to call it one Crystal Cup when you essentially have two Crystal Cups, if that makes sense. Like, right. so how, how it works is, right, is Friday we'll play and then to the top cut. And then Saturday we'll play to the top cut. And then Sunday is the top cut from both days. But even then, um, the top cut from Saturday will only play the top cut from Saturday up into the grand finals. And the same thing for Friday. So basically Friday people only play against Friday people until there's one winner. And Saturday only plays against Saturday people until there's one winner. And then the winner of Saturday and then the winner of Friday then play the grand finals for the three buys. Right. So yeah. like, that doesn't really seem like one tournament to me, right? That seems it. It feels more like two tournaments. So it's that's mm -hmm. my gripe about it. <laughs> now, do we know if they're cutting the top sixteen from each day, or is it top eight, or have you heard? I don't know, but I'm interested to figure that out because I think last I checked, Saturday had like thirty four players, and Friday had like fifty four. Mm -hmm. So like, if you cut to a top sixteen. Out of a thirty man, thirty four man tournament, <laughs> that's assuming all thirty four show up. Right. That's uh, a little interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's almost it almost could be like a like a fairly easy. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but like, just avoid Okimoto. Sign up for Saturday. Play it safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Carmona's in Saturday, or Carmona Carmona's playing Friday. Also, you don't want to play that lightning deck. Uh, <laughs> no, but but, uh, but yeah. So, so like my over, my overall opinion is, I think. They're testing it out. Uh, personally, I would prefer it just to be one day. But if there's like some time restriction or, 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 or space restriction or whatever the reason is they split it up, then it's it, I'm okay with testing it out. Like I'm not going to not go because of the format. But I'm also not like jumping for joy because of the format, if that makes sense. Right, no. And you, you're a player that's played in, in the SoCal Crystal Cup, so you've experienced it firsthand. And you've, you've played in Boston where it was just one day. For a Swiss, one day for Top Cut. Um, yeah, I, after playing it both, I definitely prefer like the one day to top, one day Swiss into a one day top or next day Top Cut. Right. Okay. So now that we got most of your uh, very competitive and very successful uh, tournament uh, report basically out of the way, uh, let's get to some of the the more fun questions. Uh, so let's start off. We'll start off easy. Uh, what is your what is your favorite uh, element to play in Final Fantasy TCG? Mono, so, mono, of course. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, mo oh, like single element, not just element in general. Yeah, yeah, just like I guess we'll say single element, maybe. Okay, so, um, so not so not mono color deck, just uh, element in general. Yeah, well, we we could answer both either way. <laughs> I'll answer, I'll answer both. Um, so my favorite element to play. Oh man, I'm, I'm the kind of person that likes to play all kinds of elements. But if I needed, if I had to narrow it down. People are gonna hate me for this, but I, I'm gonna say ice. <laughs> oh, ice! Oh, no. You get no. People get... are gonna hate me for it, but I'm, I, I, my ice. The reason and the reason I say ice is because all the ice cards do things that I generally like to do to my opponent. <laughs> you know, like I, I, the, the way the ice plays and pressures your opponent is the the kind of style that I enjoy playing. Okay. So, uh, actually, while, while I have you on the topic, I'll, I'll get to the heavily debated question. Um, this one's not, not as fun of a question. Uh, how do you feel about Mono Ice, like the, the Turbo discard right now? Um, I think... Oh, man. You're, you're giving me these questions. All right, all right, all right. Hold on. This is the only <laughs> tough one. After this, I swear, it's every, everything's Dragoon-related. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't mind the tough questions. I'm just trying to figure out the, the right way of how to word it, right? Because I don't want to say something that may offend people. Um, I think it's a pretty dumb deck in the, in the aspect that it's very non-interactive with your opponent. And right. sometimes it just draws... Like, sometimes it can just win a game based off how it draws. And most of the time, your opponent can't recover if it just draws the way it's supposed to draw. Like, if it, make, if it goes like Thaumaturge, Gesper, Kazusa, turn one, and then... 
next two cards is a Mateus, and your opponent had to play it forward, like, I mean, sometimes you just win games. <laughs> yeah, and then but, top top decking Squall is always... And then, yeah, and then top decking Squall the next turn is just like... Like, sometimes the deck just draws like that, and it will just win a game. Mm -hmm. However, the amount of times that will happen shouldn't quantify it to win a tournament doing that every single game, right? Like, when you get into a best of three, um, and when you know that you're playing against that deck, as long as you've practiced, you should have set lines of play that your deck has against that deck. And while the deck can draw nutty and still win, even if you know what it's doing, you have a higher chance than normal of beating the deck because you know what you're playing against. As to where in Swiss... That deck is like a Swiss warrior because yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you don't know you're playing against it, so like you can't keep an optimal hand against it, and your opponent can just play everything, and then you're like, oh, you're, just, you're the turbo discard deck. Crap, I didn't keep a hand for that, so I'm super behind. Hopefully I top deck. Like That's the feeling you're going to get in Swiss, mm -hmm. but in a top cut, I think you you have a way better chance against it, which is, what, which is also why I don't think it wins, right? Yeah. Like I don't, it, it, it makes a top cut, but it doesn't win big events, right? I'm, I'm excluding local qualifiers. It doesn't win like big events, at least yet. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it win any big events. I know I've seen it made top cut. Um, I know there was two at my last local qualifier. Uh, one was one of my, actually, they were both two of my very good friends. Uh, I managed to avoid them in Swiss, luckily, and they uh, one made top cut, but I didn't have to play him. So, <laughs> which I was, I was kind of happy about, but I've also tested against the deck quite a bit, so I kind of know like the lines of play. Yeah, like, like while I think the deck existing is probably not the healthiest, but it's also not like, let me just ban every single card in the deck, in my opinion. Right, no, I, I like, definitely agree. It's, it, it's not like the healthiest, but it's also not, yeah, like, it's not like ban every card in the deck. Um, what I don't like about it is, if you play that at your local, which I, I think if you're going to play the deck at a local, you want to make sure there's no new players at that local. Because if you're a new player and you play against that deck, you're not going to have a really good, fun time playing the game, mm -hmm. most likely. And you're going to be very turned off from playing the game. Unless you're the kind of person that likes those decks and you're a new player, and you're going to be like, let me go buy card for card that entire deck because I want to play that now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most of, the, most of the time it's the former, where people are like, wow, this game sucks, I don't want to play because... If this is what the game is, I don't want to play. Yeah, starting with starting with three or four cards in hand never never really feels too good. Uh, all right, so less serious topic. Uh, let's go ahead. What's what is your favorite card in the Final Fantasy trading card game? <sighs> all right, we'll say so, we'll, we'll say we'll say favorite card just in like that you like, and then we'll say favorite card that you play, just in case if you don't play the card. Okay, okay, okay. So my favorite card I like is Freya. Okay. Just because I like Dragoons and and all that jazz. However, my favorite card I like to play is Seven Drop Shintoto. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can agree with that last one. I mean, I like Freya as well, but I, Seven Drop Shintoto is definitely one of the most, if not the most impactful card, probably in the entire card game itself. It, it's costly, but it does so much. Oh, no, absolutely. And, and now it's even tutorable, so cool. And actually, since, since you brought up Freya and you brought up Dragoons, I have to ask, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, at uh, North American Nationals last year, there was some Dragoon cards displayed all over the hotel, all throughout the hallways. So, <laughs> so I have to know, who, who is responsible? <laughs> if, if you can reveal that information. I can't say who it was, but it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Cause I, I know who it was. I definitely but remember. I, can't tell you. I definitely remember like walking down the halls and like it'd be like it would say like the room number and there would just be a dragoon sticking up and I'm like, huh? I, like I knew I didn't I knew who you were and I knew you liked dragoons but I didn't I wouldn't know you personally at the time. So I was just like, man, I wonder if that was Okimoto just throwing dragoons all around. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. I know who it was, and they mainly wanted to do it to troll Cosmore. <laughs> okay. So we so, we can't reveal it at this time now. <laughs> I can't I can't rat him out, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, was, so, <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> so, uh, so we know you like dragoons. Uh, how about uh, the Final Fantasy video games? Have you played them? What's your favorite? Uh, yeah, I've played. I pretty much played all of them up until twelve. <laughs> I 
can't say the most recent ones I haven't played, but um, my favorite one, mm-hmm. oh, man, that's that's rough. Uh, There's a lot I'm of prob- dragoons to choose from, so. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to go with Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, that's okay. Probably my favorite one because there's strategy involved, like a lot of strategy. No, so absolutely. I, I, I like it. Um, a close runner-up is Final Fantasy XI. Um, I think that was probably my favorite MMO to this date. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of got to the Final Fantasy XI party a little bit late, unfortunately, uh, but it was still pretty fun. I definitely enjoyed it, and I, I love tactics. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's pretty much covers the, all the questions I've had for you. Uh, so you got Gen Con next. Uh, you said you're thinking about going to Seattle, right? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I need to figure out how what my, if my wife wants to go. She has family in Seattle, so she might want to go. If she wants to go to Seattle, then we'll probably get a room and then like see her family and whatnot, make it like, kind of like another mini vacation. If she doesn't go, I'll probably reach out to people to see if they want a room. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. There's going to be a lot of people there to trying to get that the last chance of the three round buy so that'll be interesting I, w- I unfortunately will not be able to make it I gotta save my money for uh, for Gen con this week and California obviously because uh, you don't need to go anyway you'll get your three buys this week I I hope so Ho- hopefully <laughs> no Sam prime Sam prime's not there to stop me in top four so <laughs> was he he was your only loss wasn't he uh yeah well Zach beat me in one of he beat me in game one of our best of three and then I won. Uh, I mean, like match wise, like he's. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you were EXO in Swiss, right? Yeah. So he was the only one. So you had like an Andy Carmona experience at KC. Yeah. Because sure. Andy was, I think, also EXO in Swiss, mm-hmm. and then, I, and then I pulled. I did what Sam Prime did to you, to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are. You guys like, are... like literally the same thing, right? Because like your only loss was to Sam, who won KC, mm-hmm. and then Andy's only loss was to me, who won Boston. Yeah, so so Gen Con is my best chance. So, so Gen Con is like you're in Andy's time to fight for you two to be in the grand finals to get your four, your three round by. Now wait, let's see. Now say say this works out perfectly for me. Say I play Saturday and I meet you in the finals. Will the buys pass down to me? Do we know that yet? <laughs> uh, I don't, the buys don't pass down. Oh my god! But goodness. but I already told myself if I play someone. In the finals, I'll play it out. But but everybody that's what I can say right now. I'm, I'm everybody lying, you know? on Saturday is eager. They're they're eager. They're listening right now. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll play it out, and what happens happens. <laughs> right on. All right. So we got Gen Con in Seattle next on Okimoto's radar, followed by Nationals. Uh, Matt, thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, any shoutouts that you have before we go ahead and close this out? Uh, shout outs to my wife who is being patient and quiet in the next room over while I'm doing this. Um, and to MetaPotion, Kyle, everybody, the entire community, you for asking me is a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. The Choco, the Choco Bros, RV Returners, all the content creators out there. Everybody. Awesome, man. Well, uh, once again, man, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, please make sure to go check out Meta Potions website. Um, check out their shirts. They got awesome shirts. They got awesome hoodies. All kinds of merchandise that you can find. Uh, and uh, I, I've been Cody Snodgrass of the Choker Bros. And I'm Matt Okimoto from Meta Potion. All right, guys. Take care.